<laughs> Welcome! It's a great day to be a miner in today's video. We got an exciting-ish new piece of hardware to test out. We're going to put it through the rounds. We're going to get it hashing. We're going to get you all the nerdy numbers. So let's stop gabbing and let's spin that intro. Welcome! Today we got an exciting new item to review. This is the RX 6500 XT. It is a Sapphire Pulse and we're going to unbox this thing. We're going to go over the specs, the features, and then of course we're going to get it mining and we're going to put it through the rounds and then of course we'll go over all the nerdy numbers. But first, let's go ahead and unbox this thing. You know what time it is. RGB knife. Engage. That never gets old. Let's go ahead and tear into this thing and see what it looks like. It actually weighs a little more than I thought it would because it weighs pretty close to the 6600 non-XT uh, Sapphire Pulse. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like in the box. What's in the box? All right, Sapphire always has a unique way of boxing. They usually put a nice little sleeve with their nice designs and logos on it and the specs and the features. But then inside, it's usually just a plain brown box. Yep, on brand. And there it is, just your plain GPU box. And let's take a look under the hood and see what it looks like. And there is our manufacturer warranty, our quick start guide, and the GPU itself. It has a couple pieces of foam to keep it from sliding. And that's about it, no frills inside of that box. And inside here, nice anti-static bubble envelope. And there's the card. Man, this thing is small. It's tiny. It's so cute though. Look how, look how cute this thing is. And it really does not weigh very much. I bet it weighs about as much as the rest of the packaging combines. So it's an interesting little cute card. So next, let's go ahead and do the most important part of this, the satisfying peel. Let's see if we can get it in one nice swoop. All right, y'all ready? Here we go. Oh, come on, come on, you can do it. Nice and even. Oh, come on, come on, Sapphire. Ah, oh, we ripped. Let's finish it. Ah. Oh. There it is. There she is. Ah, oh, one more piece. And there she is. All right, let's take a closer look at this thing and we'll go over the specs and of course the features. This is the RX 6500 XT. It is built off the RDNA architecture on the six nanometer GPU process. It comes packed with a whopping four gigabytes of DDR6 memory with a huge 64 bit bus. It has 1024 stream processors, 16 compute units. It has a game clock of 20 685 megahertz and a boost clock of 2825 megahertz. The measurements on this thing are 194 millimeter by 107 millimeter by 40 millimeter. It is a dual slot card. It has a TDP of 130 watts and a suggested power supply of 500 watts. It uses a single six pin PCIe power connector. All right, before we tear into this, let's talk about the test bench and what the specs are on. For my test bench, I'm using an Intel 10600K CPU with an EVGA 240 millimeter AIO. I'm using Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB memory, 32 gigabytes, just a 3200 megahertz. I'm using an Asus Prime H570 plus motherboard. And then I have a Silicon Power NVMe plus SSD. All right, all right, so here we are. We finally got all the testing done. I've got a lot of hours into this one. But before we actually dive into the nerdy numbers, I wanted to just quickly show you a quick and dirty how to overclock this card. It really is a pretty easy overclock because it doesn't have a ton of headroom. And with all AMD 6000 series, if you're on Windows, I highly advise that you use the built-in Radeon overclocking software. It just works better, it sticks better. 
I love MSI Afterburner, but for the 6000 series, it, it just does not hold the settings properly. It's often fighting with the AMD settings. Go with the Radeon software if you are in Windows. So I've got it up here, and we're going to start from the beginning. So you're going to click the Performance tab to get into the overclocking. Then you're going to click Tuning. Then you're going to see your graphics card here. And if you only have one like I do in this test bench, it would show up here. Then you're going to go over, clear over to the right, and you're going to click Manual Tuning Custom. And then you're going to agree to that if you bork your card that you're not going to press against AMD for it, whatever. Hit accept. Okay, so next, you've already into your software. Now what you need to do is you need to enable a bunch of things. You want to enable your GPU tuning right here. You want to scroll down your advanced control. You want to enable advanced control. Scroll on down your VRAM tuning. You want to enable and then you want to scroll down to your advanced control enable now you have everything enabled go ahead and set your memory timing from the default to fast timing and what that does is it gives you just a little bit of extra hash rate across the board on all the 6000 series cards so there's your base settings this is what you would start with if you just took your card and started mining with it and obviously we want to tweak and tune. So let's just do the overclock for Ethereum Classic that I'm gonna show on the nerdy numbers. Okay, so first off, the difference between AMD and NVIDIA, when you're doing NVIDIA, say through MSI Afterburner, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull down the power limit. Whereas with the AMD tuning, as you pull down your max frequency, your max core clock, you're actually pulling down the amount of voltage that's going in there and thus you're actually controlling the power of the card in this manner. And so I've already done quite a bit of testing so I know exactly my numbers and where I can get a good stable overclock without actually going too low, hurting my hash rate or actually causing instability. So for Ethereum Classic, we're going to drop this down to 1200. And there's my max. And whenever we fire this thing up, that's going to make my core voltage down here, this MV, only go up around 700 or so. And that's what actually how much voltage is going into the core. So then we've already got our fast timing enabled. The next thing we want to do is we want to pull up our memory. For this card, I know that it will handle the max 2400 on the overclock. Now, some other ones other silicon might not handle it quite as well i know for a fact that red panda had a single fan power color and it was only allowing for a 2380 on the memory because it was causing instability for him anytime he would go above and beyond that so there is our overclock for ethereum classic and then the last thing you want to do is you want to hit apply now our overclock is applied now let's just go ahead and fire this thing up and see how it does so we're going to go to our downloads and we're going to use lol miner and i'm using version 1.44 and we're going to go ahead and fire up etc as it's firing up we can go back into our overclocks and we can see there our core voltage is actually displaying what it's pulling 718 millivolts even though down here it states 1200 <clears throat> by pulling the core overclock down i actually pulled down the core voltage with it then over here to the right you can see this card is using 29 watts and that's in the software you can see my even though i have the slider at 2400 my cl memory clock is at 2384 same with the frequency on the core i put it at 1200 but the multiplier makes it actually go down to 1195. now let's pop over and look and see what it's doing over here and now you can see our massive numbers of 13.85 mega hash on 29 watts at the software. And it does display our core clock and memory clock up there in the software. So there's our overclocking for Ethereum Classic. Let's go ahead and do our overclocking for Raven Kapow too. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and reset this. Up in the top right corner here, we're going to hit this little reset button. We'll hit proceed and then that wipes us back to stock. Now we're gonna start over, we're gonna hit manual tuning, custom. 
and that pops it down we're going to enable again our sliders gpu tuning enabled we're going to do advanced control enabled vram tuning enabled advanced control enabled we're going to turn our memory to fast timing and there we go and i know for this card for this algorithm that i can put my memory up to 2400 and i know that my max frequency i'm going to use is 1550 on the core and then i'm going to apply my changes next i'll go ahead and open the software we're not using lol for this i'm going to use team red miner and we're going to go down to our kapow start kapow and we're going to fire it up and then if we hop back over into our software we'll see the numbers start to jump up and it shows our core voltage is at 718 a power consumption 28 watts and our clock speed 1547 to match the 1550 we set and our memory 2384 to match our 2400 we set and there we have it our massive kapow numbers 9.25 mega hash and it's using 39 watts next let's go ahead and just jump into the nerdy numbers all right so on this sheet it gives me my best hashing algorithms best earning algorithms and i give the stock clocks and performance i give the max oc settings and i give the most efficient settings and hash rate and power draw and at the very top let's start it gives the date i started the testing the manufacturer the make and the model it's showing that i'm using driver 22.2.1 and the cost of my graphics card was 199.99 and then after i get all my numbers over here in the top right we'll go over the roi the earnings per day and the roi all right so for our coins we did ethereum classic on etc hash we did raven on kapow ergo on auto lycos flux on zell hash ton coin we did bitcoin gold which is equihash beam on beam hash and we attempted firo but it would not run it failed out we tried a couple different methods and it would not run at all and let's bump it up one to beam i could get beam to run on stock clocks but as soon as i started to tweak it at all it would crash out on lol miner so i do have the stock clocks and stock hash rate here then I'm not gonna go over all of the specifics on these overclocks and the details. You can go ahead and pause this and write down the numbers if you need them. But this is for my specific card, so your mileage may vary slightly. And then for each algorithm, again, I did the stock, the OC max, and the most efficient in that order. And what you're probably gonna mine on is your most efficient, because it's getting you the best hash per watt efficiency and that's what this column does here it's just taking the hash rate and dividing it by the wattage in the software i also recorded the wattage at the wall on the next column and this system uses about 35 watts when completely at idle with no load in it so there is the top coins and i assume that your ethereum classic and your raven coin and your flux were probably going to be your top three earning so once i got all this data done and this took me hours so the next step is i took these exact numbers and i plugged them into what to mine and as of today 211 here is the actual profitability beat as we speak on 211 raven coin is the top earning and it will earn you 55 cents before my electric rate of 11 cents per kilowatt hour after electric this card would generate 45 cents per day of profit if i was mining on raven coin and then raven coin again but it's on nice hashes next then ethereum classic would give me 34 cents profit per day then it drops down to Zell hash is clear down at 24 cents a day. It's not very good. So the next part is I'll take my top earning, which is the Raven coin, and let's plug it back over here to see how many days, how many days at $200 would it take me to pay this off? So I earn per day 45 cents profit. It will take 444 days to roi this amazing cheap bottom feeder card 
Well, there you have it. There's our nerdy numbers. I've spent way too much time on this not-so-great card. Well, thanks for sticking around with me. Let's go ahead and cut to that outro. <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, the RX 6500 XT. I don't know what else to say. Don't buy this card for mining. Don't buy this card for gaming. Don't buy this card. That being said, if you're new to mining, you need some help, make sure to join the Misfit Mining Discord. There's always plenty of seasoned vets and they're willing to help you out. If you like the video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks for coming along and enjoy the ride.